Hey guys, it's Ben the Coin Geek, and if you wanted proof as to what I know, what I don't know, well, here's some proof for you. Well, we're gonna have proof coins anyways. Uh, the only thing that I have proof of is that I'm really bad with puns, but I enjoy them anyways. And we're gonna start off with this three cent nickel piece, which has a really quite a lovely look to it. Uh, this entire video, in fact, is gonna be about proof type coins. And we'll take a closer look at each one a little bit and talk about them. Uh, talk about the marketplace and just talk about how much fun it can be to collect these coins. If you've got the money to be in these price points, uh, for some of you who are looking for a challenge, who are already spending, you know, three hundred to five hundred dollars on a coin, and some of you even more, then you know you might want to consider these because they have low mintages, but also they're really hard to find nice examples. So this is a proof sixty six from eighteen eighty two, and you know they made thirty one hundred of these, so you know, they start out with a low population. And the market on them is not too crazy. I mean, this is less than $500 on this coin. Um, and they'll trade pretty differently from coin to coin, from auction to auction. But a lot of proof type coins uh, aren't too expensive. And I think it's just kind of a fun area. It can be challenging to find coins that are really nice. So even if you are finding coins that uh, are technically rare to find something that is both a proof 66 and has good eye appeal might be difficult and this one is not listed as a cameo but it has just a touch of cameo on the obverse the reverse really didn't have that cameo appearance to it speaking of cameos now here's a rare coin rare for uh, the proof right so uh, pennies Indian head pennies are very hard to get a cameo designation on because you really need that background field to pop from the foreground. And this one is a 65 red-brown cameo. And overall, really a nice coin. Uh, you can see, I'm trying to see if that little hairline is across the coin or the plastic. I think it's on the plastic. But overall, you can see it's relatively mark-free the red-brown designation. This is a coin that had a mintage of about 2,300 pieces. So, but the very few coins kind of at the beginning of the series are the ones that end up cameo. I don't have the stats on this coin, not exactly, but I'll have some, I have another one later to talk to you about. But uh, these coins are all over the place in value. I'm seeing them trade anywhere from 800 to a couple thousand. So they really depends on the day in the auction. Uh, the buyer and the seller on some of those cameo coins, but the cameos are really tough to get on the Indian head penny. As an example, here's a nice 1873 with the closed three variety. They made both types on these, proofs in both types. Uh, they have an estimate for the number of proofs made at 1,500 to 2,000 pieces. And this is another example of a coin that's not super expensive maybe you'd consider sending it in for conservation. It's a little hazy on the back. But, you know, for a coin that's under $300, um, by the gray sheet standards, a proof 63 red-brown, you know, it's a neat coin. And, and, and maybe if it were yours, you'd consider sending it in, like I said, for conservation. See if they get that little haze off the back and that little green spot. You know, maybe, maybe it even jumps up to a 60 for once you get rid of those marks. So the seated the seated coins, man, I I gotta tell you, I have owned so many seated coins in the past that are proof that I didn't want to get rid of. Uh, this this would be on that list. I mean this coin has a look that I really enjoy. Right? It has this subtle tone and it has just the the reflectivity is just super strong across the whole coin and then you have just these touches of luster pardon me color hints of color around it but uh i i just love the way that coin looks overall it, you know it's just like the the background fields are just like pools of water uh, around islands of design so Proof 66 plus, uh, also a coin that's probably a thousand dollar plus coin, a mintage of less than a thousand pieces. And, you know, in my mind, I just always think, how could you go wrong? And once again, 
for me always, I, you know, I'm more of the hobby aspect. I don't really call these investments, but wouldn't it be great to own, you know, coins like these? And I just think there's just no downside to having coins that look like this. In the long run, it just seems to me like, you know, would you rather have this coin or, you know, another Morgan dollar that's kind of a semi-key date, right, in, in a U58 or something. Speaking of seeded coins, we're going small and mighty on this guy. So this is a half dime, and once again, this makes me want to collect coins. Uh, I'm not going to lie. I mean, like, you want to talk about the hard part about being a dealer? Oh, my goodness. At least I get to own them for a little while and look at them, right? I mean, that's the good news, but my goodness. So there's a lot of scratches on the case. This is an older case. And for those of you who are really kind of case nerds, you already know what this holder is based on what you can see of the holder. But the color on here is fantastic. You know, you get this with the modern PCGS TrueView photography, and it's going to blow your mind with those colors and that cameo look. This is an old school Proof 65, and the coin is just lovely. Just lovely. I mean, all the IP on the world. If you, you know, if you like that kind of thing, <laughs> if you like it. So that's a coin that uh, also is probably a thousand dollar type coin. Uh, next up, we're gonna go a little bit mid-century modern here, 1937 Mercury dime. Also really challenging, you know, this is a coin where there's uh, close to 6,000 pieces minted, but trying to find a high quality, especially on these, because then you get a lot of those little soft abrasions in the field and on the cheek, but this one you can see is really super clean. You know, you get at that angle and there's not, you don't see all those little fine hairlines and abrasions that you will oftentimes see on the proof coins. And that's kind of the difference uh, for a lot of these proof coins. It'll have to do with overall field quality and uh, it, as opposed to contact marks. Proof 67 with the, uh, the green bean cack sticker, a coin that's probably in the $600 ballpark. Uh, really neat coin, very attractive overall. Nice coin, and you know, per biblical, biblical teachings, saving the best for last. Hello, uh, 1892 barber half. I hope. I hope. Um, <laughs> for those of you who are like watching over your phone, like at lunch, I hope you're not drooling on your phone right now. Uh, you know, that's just a thing. Uh, so barber coins, super nice looking when they're uh, proof, but also when you get a cameo, and this one is a 66 star cameo, uh, star is the IPL designation, and really the obverse of this coin is, I think, what you'd call a deep or an ultra cameo, and the reverse is just a cameo, but the ultra cameo, there, in for this particular date, there's only 11 graded ultra cameo, in 118 cameo. And, and one of the things that's interesting about proof coins, interesting to me anyways, is, is this has a mintage of 1,245 pieces. And in base, based on NGC's survival rate or their pop report, I should say, about 65% of the coins are not cameo, right? So 1,200 coins produced and, and they've got um, less than 400 graded themselves, and then I didn't I didn't look at PCGS's pop, but you know you get the idea of how scarce it is to get a coin that is cameo, and so it's this super niche market where not only you're looking at a proof, now you now you can drill down into cameos and look at how few of them are actually cameos. So you know, uh, really probably only a few hundred coins were made with any cameo based on just how they were produced and then how many of those survived. And the ones that survived, what type of condition are they in? Now are they cameo, but they got scuffed up? You know, were they out and about just getting scuffed up? Look at that field. That's some lovely stuff. Just that touch of toning, but um, strong, strong, strong coin. And kind of what, kind of what you want. Would you sell all of your would you sell all of your sets to buy this coin? Like this is a roughly three thousand dollar coin. It is also a coin that, if it were mine, I would probably just put in auction uh, if I felt like I was going to part ways with it. But uh, that is that's just me. So, anyways, guys, uh, enjoy the show. Thanks for watching. 
I hope you like those. Leave your comments down below. I've been the Coin Geek. You can subscribe by clicking on the button in the corner and watch more videos on the right side of the screen. Thanks.